Good morning, everybody. And welcome back to the Grand Hotel for the last time for our final weekend meeting of the Citizens' Assembly. Um, I would like to inv invite everybody joining us online. I would also like to invite the observers and, um, of course, most, most importantly, uh, um, I um, welcome the members to this last meeting. Um, just to explain why we're here on the um, 14th and 15th of April, our original attempt to meet on the topic of fixed term parliaments six weeks ago was hampered by Storm Emma and the snow. Um, it became obvious throughout the course of the week leading up uh, to that weekend that it was not going to be feasible to hold the meeting and the safety of our members, of our suppliers, um, of the staff and observers is always of paramount importance and as such we decided that the meeting due to take place on the 3rd and 4th of March should be postponed. Now following that the reschedule, rescheduling of the meeting required the approval of the Houses of the Oireachtas um, because we required a second extension of our term by a further one month. Um, so uh, I would like to thank the Taoiseach and his officials for carrying out the administration associated... Sorry. Sorry. I would like to thank the Taoiseach and his officials for the... Um, for carrying out the administration associated with getting that extension. And I would also like to thank the members of both houses for approving our extension uh, to, allow, to allow us fulfil our remit and deal with the last topic. Now, I also would like to thank the Assembly stakeholders and suppliers who were so accommodating in terms of making themselves available uh, for this weekend at very short notice, I might add. Um, I'm, all, I'm most grateful uh, to you all for your contribution in allowing us to conclude the Assembly's formal proceedings. Uh, returning to the present, this is the 11th weekend we have gathered here since November 2016, in addition to our inaugural meeting in Dublin Castle. To date, we have covered four topics, heard 61 expert speakers, uh, spent endless hours deliberating, and made 70 recommendations to the Houses of the Oireachtas. Um, those numbers will have, have increased by the end of this week um, to a certain extent. Um, this weekend, we bring to a close the Assembly's formal proceedings with our consideration of the fifth and final topic assigned to us, fixed term parliaments. It is understood that this topic was included at the request of the Independent Alliance. In advance of this weekend, the members were provided with a private member's bill from 2015, which was proposed by, by Independent Alliance TD, Shane Ross, now the Minister for Transport. The bill entitled 35th Amendment of the Constitution, Fixed Period for du Duration of the All Aaron Bill 2015, sought to introduce a fixed term parliament in Ireland. So we thought it might be useful if you wanted to um, cons consider the background to this topic uh, that, that you have uh, that bill. And um, we also provided you with extracts from the report of the Constitution Review Group from 1996, which was chaired by T.K. Whittaker, the late T.K. Whittaker. Uh, and again, we thought, just to give you an overview of where we are today, I thought it would be useful if you had that material. I found it useful uh, reading it, I have to say. This will be the second time we will both commence our consideration of a topic and formulate the recommendations within the space of a single weekend. Now, the structure of the weekend's discussions and the ballot paper, couple of fuckle on those matters. Our consideration of fixed term parliaments will focus on whether there should be greater restrictions in place on the Taoiseach's ability to advise the President to dissolve the Dáil. This topic requires us to consider a number of constitutional articles. Um, in developing the work programme, it became clear that this topic is relatively uh, discreet um, and self-contained. And while that is the case, um, there, 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 there are 
a lot of aspects to it and um, I, we're going to have some very interesting papers and I would encourage you to, as you always do, uh, to concentrate because it is a very interesting topic. Um, um, we were, in fact, we're going to have four speakers in four distinct sessions. First of all, Dr. Owen Daly from NUI Galway will explain the current law on, and practice on summoning and dissolving um, of Dáil and Shanna Aaron. This will be supplemented by a presentation by Dr. Owen O'Malley from Dublin City University, who will discuss the history of the political practice of invoking the legal provisions around summoning and dissolving the houses of the Oireachtas. Professor Petrus Leiter from the University of Oxford will give an overview of the experience and practice of fixed term parliaments in other jurisdictions. She will provide an insight as to the different types of fixed term parliament that exist and are used in different parts of the world. And finally, Dr. Rory Costello from the University of Limerick returns to the Irish example and what, implications, what the implications would be if, if, if fixed term parliaments were introduced here. He will examine the pros um, and cons and any other issues arising. So the first two sessions will be followed by roundtable discussion and questions and answers with the first two speakers. The second two sessions will be followed by a further roundtable discussion and quest uh, questions and answer session. On that occasion, this morning's four speakers will be on the panel. Now, um, this weekend's speakers have prepared very informative papers to accompany their oral presentations. The, the members, you the members, received those last week in anticipation of the weekend's proceedings. And for the general public, the papers will become available on our website throughout the course of the day. And this afternoon, we'll work on the ballot paper. Uh, and I would like to briefly refer to the ballot paper, uh, which will dominate the afternoon proceedings. And uh, as you know, it is the mechanism by which we formulate our recommendations. We have not circulated a draft ballot paper to the members. Uh, the reason for this is that the preparation of the ballot paper is member-led and uh, reflects the deliberations of the members and incorporates the areas of most interest to them to vote on. Uh, for previous topics, it was possible to circulate a draft in advance, as when a topic was considered across multiple weekends, we could ask the members for suggested inclusions in the draft ballot paper through either roundtable discussion or reflective exercises. Um, and now, this is different, similar to the last topic, which was the manner in which a referenda are held. Uh, the uh, Secretariat, in consultation with the expert advisory group, will be preparing a draft ballot paper based on the discussions throughout the morning. To assist with this task and to focus the members' minds as to the types of things we would like to see expressed on a draft ballot paper, time has been allocated in the agenda at the roundtable discussions after this morning's sessions to seek a feedback from members on possible issues arising for the Assembly's recommendations. This feedback will be given, to the, will be given in public during the questions and answer sessions, that is, just before lunch. And the draft ballot paper will be worked on over the course of lunch, uh, uh, over the lunch break by the Secretariat and the Expert Advisory Group. It will then be printed and ready for the members' um, consideration in the afternoon uh, session. And then I will provide a detailed uh, explanation of the draft, as it is then, um, and it will be in a public session. And the members will then have an opportunity to critically discuss its contents in their roundtables and the wording will be finalised in public. And um, this gives the uh, Secretariat uh, an opportunity uh, to print the final version of the ballot paper overnight. And uh, tomorrow will be solely focused on voting and the results of the, vo the votes will be announced in the public session. And the results will constitute the Assembly's recommendations to the Houses of the Oireachtas. Now, I just want to mention the expert advisory group for this topic. Um, throughout the process, we have had the, uh, we've been extremely fortunate to have the benefit um, of um, experts uh, to advise us. 
and um, in uh, and same applies again this weekend. We have a number of. Uh, members of, of the expert advisory group on site here today, uh, but uh, I just want to express my gratitude to the whole um, expert advisory group, um, Oren Doyle, Robert Elgi, John Gary, Kevin Rafter, Theresa Reedy and Rachel Walsh. Um, they, they, they were, of, uh, the, the epithet I use on every occasion, you're bored with it at this stage, they gave us invaluable help in um, framing the work uh, programme, identifying the expert speakers, and um, considering the issues, the relevant issues. And um, I'm very grateful for their continuing support and guidance. And uh, I think uh, three will be here today, uh, Robert Elgi, John Gary, and I, I saw John, and I think Oren Doyle, uh, is Oren here? Uh, and they, they'll be here um, to help with the, 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 uh, the, uh, during the questions and answer sessions, and they'll be here to help the Secretariat in actually drafting um, the um, ballot paper, which, on the basis of my experience over a year and a half, is really the most difficult aspect of the whole process. Now, couple of fuckle about uh, the submissions. Um, as you know, we consider that the submissions are, um, that the, the submissions process is a useful mechanism to ascertain the pressing and most prevalent aspects of the topic um, at hand. Now I have to say on this occasion, unfortunately, despite the Secretariat's, Secretariat's best efforts to encourage public engagement with the submissions process, we have received our lowest number of submissions for this topic. In fact, we only received eight relevant submissions, and these have been published on the website. Um, so we, we, we didn't think it would be worthwhile uh, summarising these submissions as we've done on previous occasions, so instead, um, that the members were directed to the full text of the submissions on the website, and in fact, um, uh, hard copies are included in, in the packs. Um, and uh, just in case outsiders would like to uh, consult the submissions, they're on our website, www.citizensassembly.ie. Uh, finally, um, I just mentioned the reports. Um, i just give you a short uh, update on the publication of um, the Assembly's reports on the third and fourth topics, climate change and referenda. Um, work continues uh, to be carried out by myself and the Secretariat on the preparation of both of these uh, reports and they will be laid before the House of the, Oroc of the Oroctus in due course. Once published, they will be available as a public record to view on our website. And I could just say we, we, we do hope uh, to present the uh, final report on climate change to the houses of the Oireachtas when, when they resume next week, probably on Wednesday the 18th. And uh, so that's all I have to say at the moment. And I'm now going to call on Dr. Rowan Daly uh, to give us our first presentation today. Thank you very much.